Hello, I'm Kathy Wren at AAAS, the Science Society that publishes the journal Science. I'm talking today with Dr. Ethan Garner, winner of the GE in Science Prize for Young Life Scientists. Dr. Garner, could you please tell us your title and affiliation? Uh, I'm a PhD and I'm currently at the University of California, San Francisco, but in a week I will be at Harvard Medical School. So the competition recognizes outstanding doctoral students worldwide and rewards innovative research in molecular biology. Dr. Garner's essay, which has won him the grand prize of $25,000, is titled Understanding a Minimal DNA Segregating Machine. The essay will be published in Science on December 5th, embargoed for 2 p.m. Eastern Time the day before. So how does it feel to win this award, Dr. Garner? It was pretty surprising, actually. I, I fell over, literally, I tripped over the cat when they told me I was trying to maintain my composure while on the phone. But I guess I was shocked overall because there's been so much great work that happened in the last year from various groups, so I was pretty surprised to get the award. Okay. And your cat's all right? My cat's all right. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so you've been studying a system that helps ensure that a dividing bacterial cell provides both its daughter cells with the correct genetic material. And you're actually looking at one particular bacterial chromosome, also known as a plasmid, and the machinery that pushes the two plasmid copies to opposite ends of the dividing cell. So could you please explain why this plasmid interests you? Well, I wanted to study this plasmid basically because it contains a minimal DNA segregating machine. So plasmids are large kind of extra DNA elements that are not native to bacteria. Um, and they encode a whole lot of extra genes. For example, the one I study has antibiotic resistance to five different classes of antibiotics. Well, because all these genes use up a lot of energy, um, it's advantageous to the bacteria to get rid of them. So as such, the plasmids um, actually need to encode little mechanisms to ensure their segregation um, and to ensure they're actually passed on. So it was this little machinery I actually wanted to study. Now, this seems like pure research, but this does have an, event an eventual medical component because if you can somehow actually target this machinery, say chemically, to actually prevent these plasmids from segregating, you could then stop the plasmid spread and stop antibiotic resistance from spreading from this plasmid. Thank you. So this machinery that you were talking about, it consists of one DNA sequence and two proteins. Could you describe for us what you've learned about how these three elements work together to do their job? Well, the most surprising element to this was the fact that these three components actually are sufficient to segregate their DNA. Um, we were able to test this by, by taking beads coated with the plasmid DNA um, and adding that into a test tube with two other protein components. And what we saw is that the beads would actually get next to each other and form filaments that would push these plasmids apart. Um, well, by studying this, we learned how the system worked, and it turns out that the filaments by themselves are naturally unstable. They'll grow for a while and then all of a sudden very rapidly shrink and disappear. But when you have the filaments bound at each end by the plasmid and their adapter molecule, they become stabilized and then the filaments can elongate, pushing the plasmids apart to either end of the cell. So this was a little surprising then that such a simple system with just the three elements was able to sort of perform this very essential task of making sure that the daughter cells get the genetic material they need. Well, it was, known, it was known from genetic evidence, but no one had ever directly demonstrated it um, okay. biochemically at all. So th that's actually something we wanted to do and see if, if, you know, genetically it appeared to work, but were there any other host factors necessary or anything else? And it, the answer is no. These three components can work entirely by themselves. Interesting. Okay, so Dr. Garner, tell us, when did you know you wanted to be a biologist? Um, well, I think somewhere around the age of about 16. Um, my brother was getting a degree in microbiology at the time, and he kept calling me up every week and telling me random factoids and ran factoids about genetic engineering or about some cool organism, and that definitely like got my interest going in this. Um, and so I kind of owe a lot to him as far as why I ended up, you know, being obsessed with biology. Okay, cool. Well, this prize is intended to support scientists in the early stages of their careers, and it can be a competitive world out there for young scientists. Were there any ever any times that you seriously needed some encouragement? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I originally did bioinformatics as an undergrad at, at Washington State University. Um, so coming to UCSF and transitioning to a wet lab was a difficult and humorous experience involving a lot of broken lab equipment and a couple fires. Um, the first three years were pretty much nothing but failure, actually. 
this project is actually a side project as my original project completely failed. So yeah, it, it, it was difficult <laughs> at the onset. All right. Well, I hope this award gives you some encouragement and helps you achieve a really successful career and we wish you the best of luck. Okay. Thank you.